welcome to today's video. We are flying the Concorde in X-Plane from Heathrow in London to JFK Airport in New York. Before we begin, this is my own modified version of the Gary Hunter Concorde and I'll also be using the Payware INS plugin today. Both of those are linked in the description below. We've jumped inside the Concorde in its cold and dark state, so let's head over to the flight engineer panel and let's start her up. So first things, battery, battery, avionics. We now head down to the INS. So this is just the static texture that will pop up the actual INS and I will drag it over to here. First thing we need to do is align it. We can also cheat and align it quickly by pressing that button. Once it's aligned, we can put it in nav mode and you can see our present position is now displayed. We want to load in an X-Plane flight plan, so we'll go to remote and you can see this is our FMS file here. Press insert and it loads our flight plan into the INS. If we click waypoint here, we can see waypoint 1, 2, 3, all the way through to waypoint 7, which is JFK Airport itself. But for now, we'll just leave it on position. If you are flying online and you need to go direct to a certain waypoint, you just press waypoint change, dial in 0, your present position, and then the number of the waypoint you want to go to, press insert, and the plane will route direct to that waypoint. So it's kind of like an FMC, just a much more primitive version. With that done, we'll pop back up to the main panel and we'll select our nav source of INS. You can see that the HSI is now showing INS and it's pointing towards our route. We'll go back up to our radio panel and check our nav radios. Both of them have the destination ILS dialed in, which they do. While we're here, we'll dial in our first altitude that we're climbing to. So that will be 10,000 feet here. We'll also want a vertical speed of 3,000 feet per minute roughly for our initial climb out. We'll also set our initial speed to 250 knots. We'll now go back to the flight engineer panel. We'll just turn the afterburners off while we start up and taxi. What we'd also want to check here is our fuel selectors set to all off and off. We'll talk about fuel transfer a little bit later on. This is not an accurate representation of the Concorde flight engineer panel, but it's a good analog of it. So everything that you would do on the real panel, you can also do here when it comes to transferring fuel to manage your center of gravity. We can now head back to our main panel and we'll head down here to set the current barometer, which is quite high today, it's 3030. And we can also set our radios. So we're not flying online, so we'll leave the comm radios. We'll just squawk mode C, and we've got our squawk code dialed in here. So now is the fun part, and it's time to start the Concorde. So fuel pumps, one, two, three, and four, need to be on here. Igniters, one, two, three, and four. And we can now hit engine start for each engine. You see the green lights come alive. That means we have good start on those engines. Three and four. We can now turn inverters on and the generators on as well. We will head up to our overhead panel and we'll just turn on our anti-ice pitot heat. Lights is required here. We'll just go strobes, navs and beacon. And with that complete, it's time to get pushback and head to the runway. Starting pushback. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Okay, it's time to drop the nose to 5 degrees. And we can head out to the runway and then on to New York. Now we're on the runway, we want flight directors on, so that's one click. Turn the afterburners on for takeoff. And here we go, full throttle, afterburners up. One sixty will rotate. Positive rate, gear goes up, we go throttles back to about fifty percent. 
get our autopilot on, we'll do vertical speed mode, turn speed hold on, go shift N to follow our nav plan in the INS, pressing shift N in X plane, which is the key assigned to GPS follow steering, would be the same as pressing the INS button in the real Concorde to follow your nav track. Afterburners can go off and the nose can come up. At 5,000 feet, we can set the barometer back to standard. We're now in a nice steady climb. We're on our nav track. If we pop up the INS on the distance and time section, we've got the miles remaining to the next waypoint here. 27 miles, 6.4 minutes away, and we're going from waypoint 1 to waypoint 2. Okay, that's 10,000 feet. We'll head over to our autopilot. We can now go for 350 knots, get us over to Ireland fairly quickly. We can prepare a cruising altitude of 52,000 feet, and we can also prepare a vertical speed of 5,000 feet per minute. And there we are. We have just passed waypoint four. It's 2,000 miles till our next waypoint across the Atlantic. And we can now go supersonic. We need to turn off the auto throttle, put our throttles all the way forward. You can see the speed building more and more. We will also now transfer our fuel forward tank to the tank at the back. This will help with our climb. As we transfer that fuel, you can see the plane is naturally starting to climb. Once we hit Mach 1.1, we hit vertical speed and we begin our climb up to 52,000 feet. Now the fuel has transferred, we can turn the transfers off and our CG is nicely towards the back of the aircraft. We'll just continue to monitor the climb and the CG to make sure we hit 52,000 feet at Mach 2. So we are now accelerating without the afterburners. Concorde only uses the afterburners on takeoff. For the rest of the flight, it had so much power that it can go supersonic and stay supersonic without using reheat. Keeping an eye on this CG here, just need to transfer a little bit more just to keep that CG at the back of the aircraft. In the real Concorde, of course, this management is done by the flight engineer, and I believe in the Colimart Concorde that's coming out soon, you'll have a virtual flight engineer to help you. It's very important when you are supersonic to not change direction. So set one direct waypoint between where you start your supersonic climb and when you decelerate to subsonic again. This is so the aircraft doesn't hunt while it's trying to stay on track. If your route is straight while you're supersonic, the Concorde will have no problem staying on that magenta line. And there we are heading up to 52,000 feet. Now the outhold is illuminated and we are level. The next stage of our flight is to enter the cruise climb. So we'll set altitude to 60,000 feet. We'll set vertical speed to 100 feet per minute. We'll hit vertical speed and the Concorde will remain in cruise climb for the duration of its supersonic flight. Now we are supersonic. We're about 2,000 miles from the US. If we take a quick look here at the INS, over to the wind option, you can see the current winds are 242 degrees at 118 knots, and yet the Concorde is staying perfectly stable. At supersonic speed, we have about 90 minutes until we hit American airspace.
Okay, we're about 100 miles from the top of the descent, just over that. We'll turn the vertical speed off. We we'll set our altitude to 30,000 feet, ready to descend. Set our vertical speed to minus 3,000. And we'll go to zero throttle. Okay, so at about Mach 1.5, turn vertical speed on and we'll start to descend. Just manage the CG on the way down to keep it in the middle. Okay, that's 30,000 feet, so we'll go airspeed hold for 350 knots. And now we want our fuel transfer to the front. So we're holding steady at 30,000 feet and 350 knots. When it's time to descend at the next waypoint, we'll head down to 10,000 feet and 200. Okay, and here we go to our final waypoint. So, set our speed to 250. Get the altitude to 10,000 feet. On a vertical speed of about 2,000 feet per minute. Okay, there's 250 knots, let's go vertical speed. Okay, the air pressure at Kennedy is 3001. Remember in the US transition altitude is 18,000 feet because they have a lot of mountains and don't want people crashing into them or something. Okay, that's 10,000 feet. As we're still 68 miles away from the airport, we'll wait until we're 20 or 30 miles away before we descend to our final altitude and make our approach. about 30 miles out it's time to slow down to 220 set the altitude to our final altitude which is going to be about 2500 on a vertical speed of 2000 again and now we've slowed down go vertical speed mode so we're going to overfly the airport and then vector round onto the ILS for the runway so we're going to set our heading bug to our current heading that way when we reach the end of our route in the INS we can just press heading holds and we'll just keep going okay it was 2500 so we'll slow down to 190 the checklist says we can turn the cabin bead air off now put the nose to full we're approaching the end of the route so we'll go into heading hold mode as well okay that's Kennedy Airport just to our left there you can also see the DME to the ILS on our main panel there. We'll switch our nav source over to nav1 and that lets us keep an eye on that glide slope and we can turn around when we're below it. Okay, so setting a heading directly behind us. Maybe one degree to the left so that way the plane turns left. We're about 11 miles out so we'll go track heading and localizer so we can pick it up. Okay, localizer and land and gear. Okay, that's the glide slope. Okay, welcome to Kennedy Airport. We've made it a long way, all the way from Heathrow in the Concorde. And there we go guys, thank you very much for watching, remember please like and subscribe for more, I'll leave you with some replays and until next time remember, you can always go around.